Hey guys, in one of my other videos i done a review for the my war sensor here and recently I've just had the opportunity to get a Tiberius T9 into my possession for a little while. A friend of mine actually sent it my way to have it rebuilt. Uh, he was having some problems with it firing, leaking air, etc. So I told him I'd take a look at it and see what I could find out and figure out and get it working for him. So I've actually had uh, quite a bit of paint and air run through this now and I feel that I can actually make a very good comparison. In one of my earlier videos I mentioned I like my war sensor better than my, than some of the Tiberiuses that were on the market. At the time I was talking about the Tiberius, uh, Tiberius AT8. Uh, I really only had a chance to use one of them maybe for one game, so it, I kind of felt maybe that was a biased statement. Um, I still hold true to that. I still like my war sensor better than the Tiberius, but I feel I'm a little better prepared now to make a better comparison for it. So that's going to be the point of this video is to uh, comparison with the war sensor. Uh, this one is a Zeus G1 Plus and the Tiberius T9. The current market, I think, on your Tiberius, this is going to be a T8.1 or a T9.1 now. You can still pick up the T8 and T9. Uh, not a whole lot of difference in the guns. A uh, little different cosmetics, a uh, little better parts, things like that. But the same functionality is identical. Uh, a lot of the internal parts still the same. The functionality of the guns are still the same, I should say. So a lot of the newer ones, a uh, little better add-ons or accessories, a uh, little bit more cosmetically pleasing as well. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, the two thing, or the what I'd like to start with on these two guns was the big thing why I still like my War Sensor versus the Tiberius, and that's the CO2 feeding system in them. Now with the War Sensor, the CO2 feeding system is uh, under barrel, and you just pop off the CO2 cap. This is already a spent CO2 cartridge that I'm using for demonstration purposes. So with the war sensor, you'd slide that in there, and on my full review, you actually hear me mention, like, uh, push it in, slide it till you feel, go down onto the, um, the pin seal in there, and then you just put your cap back on, screw it in until you feel a little resistance, and then it's usually half a turn, the, the gun gas is up, and you're good to go. Now, on the Tiberius, on the other hand, it's actually a bottom fed cartridge, which is kind of neat. This was actually a point for the Tiberius, like just the neat factor alone. But what threw me back with the Tiberius was that when you put it in, once again, another spent cartridge, uh, you put it in and you need a wrench to actually tighten this on and um, seal the CO2 in. So to me, that's one more part that you got to carry on the field if you're going to be using multiple CO2 cartridges. Uh, and kind of the same deal as with the war sensor. You put it into you get some resistance, and then it's you got to do a real just quick turn. And if there's actually gas in it, you'll hear it gas up. You just keep going until there's no leaking. Um, so I didn't really care for that whole aspect of this because if you wanted to change on the field your cartridge, you either had to buy more magazines, which forced you to buy more magazines, or you had to carry a wrench on the field and you had to do that every time you wanted to get a new cartridge in. But as I said, the bottom feed in this, really neat. Once you put the full CO2 cartridge in, the gun automatically cocks, which was uh, kind of, I liked that idea behind it. Automatically cocked, it was ready to go, you just pulled the trigger, and you started firing. As with the war sensor, you actually had to cock the gun by hand before you could start putting paintballs out. Now the second thing that um, drew me towards the war sensor versus the... Tiberius here was the paintball comes alone. The, the Tiberius only holds eight rounds and it's once again through the bottom feed. And with these you can use a 10 round tube. It's a little tricky. You have to push the ball holder out of the way and then feed your paintballs in for your eight. And there you go. And that's your eight rounds. You're ready to go. As soon as you put it in, you uh, it'll automatically force the paintball up into place, etc. But oh. anywho, so you only get eight rounds, and once again, when you go to reload, it can cause a bit of pain in the butt. So that was kind of a drawback for me in the Tiberius. Uh, I wanted something that was a little faster. This is, once again, to me, it's just looking like it's making you 
need to buy more parts. You will have to go out and pick up more, mag more of these magazines. And if you had a couple of them, this would be a great gun because you would be getting um, pretty constant CO2 because you'd only be going eight shots and then a new CO2 parachute should be going in. Like if you carried three of these around, that would give you 24 shots. Um, still, it was just a drawback for me. Now, on I said earlier you could actually take this plate off and you could put a hopper on, but that's kind of defeating the purpose for a sidearm for me. So that was kind of a point against the Tiberius was it only holds eight rounds and the CO2 is fed in the bottom. You need a wrench to put it on. With the war sensor, all you have to do is push your spring down. It locks in place. Pull the back cap off. Ten round tube. Straight in. The only catchy part is with the, uh, the war sensor, there is a slant on your plug here. You have to make sure that you have the most spacing at the bottom. Push that in, release your spring, bam, you're good to go. When you need to reload, repeat the process. Push it forward, pull the plug, slap your spin round tube in, and you're good to go. And you can actually get up to doing that pretty quick. So, uh, another neat thing that I liked about the war sensor was if you kind of wanted to be a little get a few extra shots out of it. You can actually slip the 10 round tube right in the, in the end of it there and it'll give you another 10 rounds to go with. Uh, the only problem with that is once you fill your first 10 rounds you kind of get in a shake and bake mode. Every time you want to reload one into the chamber you got to tip the gun down and you're good to go but I mean if you get in a pinch that's really not that big of a deal if you're used to using something like a PGP or uh, any old pump class gun which uh, that's pretty much what I came off with my new guns. So that wasn't a big problem with me. It was just one more thing that I liked about the war sensor. Um, another thing that you'll notice between the two guns is, especially if you hold them up with this, the Tiberius is quite a bit thicker. Uh, it, I don't. It does sit comfortable in the hand. Don't get me wrong. It sits nice. It feels comfortable, but it, it it's pretty bulbous in your palm, and I didn't really care for that. Um, personal preference. Some people may like bigger grip. Uh, the bigger grip was, of course, because of the bottom feed on it. You needed to be able to get that in there, and they just had to make the grip bigger. I understand why they did it. I just didn't care for it. The war sensor, uh, a little thinner on the back. I found it just sat nicer in my hand. I could get a better grip on it, had better control of it. It just wasn't bulging out of my hand. So that was another big thing that I liked about the war sensor. Now, in my previous video, the... Um, War sensor review, I said that a lot of this in here is spider parts. That made it a little easier to work on, in my opinion. If you know how a spider works, you can work on a war sensor, have no problems. The Tiberius, on the other hand, uh, almost everything in this is proprietary. Uh, minus your O-rings and stuff, of course, they're almost universal. But uh, your regulator, uh, your bolt, all of that, it's all kind of a proprietary part in here. And if I do my Tiberius breakdown there for you, You'll be able to get to see that, but take my word on it. It's If you've never had a Tiberius before and you try to just jump in and you've dealt with other paintball guns, this can be a little bit of a surprise. It's not bad. I mean, it's the same uh, basic functionality of a paintball gun, but it is different, and it just kind of threw me for a loop. Now, the thing I do like about the Tiberius is, is the uh, quick change barrels, and that's as easy as it is to take the barrel out. You can get other barrels for these that slide in, and you're good to go, uh, so it makes getting different bore sizes easier, things like that. So I did like that, and uh, unfortunately with my war sensor, the G1 Plus, I'm stuck with basically what you see, which is that, this whole, uh, that's the barrel in through there, and that, that's, that's what I'm stuck with. The G2s, they do have a thread on the end where you can put a barrel extension on, uh, comes with like a one inch and maybe a four inch or something like that, but the G2s and uh, later the ASA or something like that, I can't remember it. But uh, you could set these up as full-on markers. You could put a longer barrel on. You could get the bottom feed to go through, put a tank on, and there is a, a little smaller version of this that sits here that you can actually hook a hopper up to. So both these guns will turn, well, not this one specifically, but a G2, which is the common one to find now, will excuse me, um, make a full-on paintball marker. The Tiberius, I found, did a better job of that when you go to full-on marker. I'm not going to touch a whole lot of it, but uh, that was a Tiberius big thing. If you're looking for a handgun that you can convert into a marker, then I would recommend the Tiberius. It was just nicer. But other than that, uh, I'm going to leave that quick comparison just like that. That's the basics of these guns. Uh, I'm going to try and pull the camera outside. 
I'll put some actual CO2 through them. I have two cartridges left there. And I'll run a tube of paint, well, a full magazine of paint through each one to give you guys an idea on that. Um, before I do that, I'd like to mention that it is windy out. Uh, it is basically coming on winter here in Canada. So today happens to be a warm day, but uh, if you get some wind noise, I do apologize for that. Um, so I will shut it down here. Hopefully I'll be able to take it out there and we'll get going. Okay, so we're outside here. Uh, it's just starting to rain, so I'm hoping that I can get this in before too much of it comes down. I'm going to start off with my war sensor. Uh, I am wearing the best because I'm going to try and shoot as many rounds through as I possibly can to give you an idea of shots. Uh, I'm also going to show you like how fast reading the time should be and the proper way to put the CO2 in each gun. So we're going to start out with the war sensor, as I said, pop the CO2 in. And I apologize for not wearing a mask, but the rain, I couldn't see a thing. So we take the CO2, push it in until it touches down, and then just put it, uh, screw this in until you get a little bit of pressure, and then it's just a quick turn. You might hear that. That was the gun gassing up. Safety's on. Pop in the first two. Pull the back out. Spring down. And uh, just to mention too, I switched to a lower grade paint on the viewers with some paint balls here. So, uh, the wind, the poor paint, the accuracy is probably going to be down. But in any case, uh, take these off. Up of leaves. So, that was 10 rounds. Uh, you heard a burp there where I was firing so fast. Well, that's fairly fast for these guns anyway. The CO2 is a little cold. It's not really that big of a problem. Also, the CO2 is old. That is a problem. So, cap back off. Second two. Here's the spring. Go back. We can go again. So, shot left and broke the rounds, I doubt I'm going to get another two of them. Yeah. And the air just test out, so I might have got three more rounds not worth mentioning. So I'm going to switch over to the Tiberius, and we'll be right back. So, switch over to Tiberius, the rain is picking up, so I'm going to have to speed this up a little bit. CO2 cartridge goes in the bottom feed. Wrench. Once again, until it's snug, I point it straight up and down, and then it's almost a half a turn, just quicker. Bam. Good to go, she's punctured. Put back in. Same crap all the paint. The thing with this is you do got to give it a little tap up in. You actually hear everything rearm itself. So we're going to flip over to this. Eight rounds currently. Same part. Right. Okay. So 
takes you back home, time for a reload, when the CO2 is in there, it'll actually eject into your hand. YouTube. rounds. We're coming up to about where the war zoos uh, crapped out on me with air. Really cold. So this one's probably not destined for much longer either. This is also a new cartridge, so I do expect to get a few more rounds out of it. Should be able to fire anything else. Just kind of freeze up on me, so I'll fire the last couple off there. That's it. Oh, oh, a little bit more. It's not really good. That was pretty much the end of her. Every time you unload her, pop the cartridge uses air to eject it. So you kind of do burn up a little bit of air there. Also today is kind of a cooler day, so uh, the CO2 is probably not working at the best of its ability either. Um, unfortunately not the best test I could do to show you guys the difference between the two because of the conditions I am working in. But uh, hopefully I'll have this in possession long enough and we'll be able to get to an indoor spot and hopefully give you a little better, more accurate uh, comparison between the two. I more or less just want to show reload times on these. There's not a huge difference, but uh, the cooler sensor is a little bit quicker, I find, anyway. Maybe it's just because I use them now. But, um, and also the eight uh, shot limit on this. Something that is a little bit more of a benefit on this is you do not have that rotor up top obstructing your uh, aim. So that is kind of nice. You just put straight down the rail. And you do get a little bit more accurate with this, but once you're used to the war sensor, it's just as accurate.